kids, I'm going to tell you an incredible story. The story of how I met Space Journeys. We've already talked about how the Cold War between the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics and the USA led to the birth of the Internet. It also led to another fantastic thing, Space Journeys. If you need detailed information about everything that's related to the subject, you can check out our awesome series, Space Journey 101. The USA and the USSR raced each other to send satellites into space. They both wanted to outrun one another by completing a successful space journey. After sending the first satellite to orbit the Earth, the USSR also succeeded in sending the first living thing to space. Remember Laika, the very first living, breathing thing that ever went to space, other than fruit flies? She was trained as a cosmonaut before being sent to orbit Earth, and she had food and water in a gelatinized form. Yikes. It was a huge step before sending an actual human to space, which the Soviet Union successfully accomplished as well, of course with more food and oxygen. They developed a rocket and a capsule under the Vostok program. Russian cosmonaut Gagarin successfully returned after orbiting the Earth in the Vostok 1 space capsule launched by the Vostok 3KA rocket on April 12, 1961. It became the first human spaceflight, making Gagarin the first human to ever be in space. Vostok 1's flight lasted for 108 minutes, and it reached an altitude of 203 miles, 327 kilometers. This only made the USA angrier, let alone taming them. This country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look beyond. On September 12, 1962, U.S. President John F. Kennedy pointed to the moon as the new target of space travel and promised to send humans to the moon within 10 years. For this purpose, the USA first designed the two-person Gemini space shuttle and then the three-person Apollo space shuttle. The Apollo 8 space shuttle, carrying astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders, succeeded in orbiting the moon 10 times in December 1968. This was the first space shuttle ever to leave Earth's orbit. Then, on July 21, 1969, a shuttle took it literally one step further. Apollo 11, carrying astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, landed on the moon's surface. Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon during this expedition. Okay, we can verify the position of the uh, opening island. It was, as Armstrong said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was a huge success, but the USA said the most important step is the next step, and they carried on sending over 10 astronauts to the surface of the moon. And liftoff, liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Actually, walking on the moon's surface slowed down the race between the two countries. They started to work together on sending space shuttles into lunar orbit together. China also wanted to enter the stage by joining the Space Games, and eventually, in 2003, Chinese taikonaut Yang Liwei flew for 21 hours in space on the Shenzhou 5 shuttle. On May 30, 2020, SpaceX successfully sent the spacecraft Crew Dragon from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, USA, with two astronauts into space. With this successful launch, SpaceX made its first manned flight into space, and for the first time in history, a private company sent people into space. And now we are talking about living in space. So your kids will probably have more exciting space stuff to tell your grandchildren. So now you know the whole exciting story with its ups and downs. Of course, it's not any more exciting from the story of how I met planes, didn't I ever tell you that story? Oh, it all started when... Curious about the next story? Then turn on notifications so as not to miss the story of how I met planes next week.